My name is David Swanson. I live here in Charlottesville, Virginia, the city that was first in the United States. There are now four that I know of uh, to pass a resolution against drones. And the artist Martha Rossler has now put up an incredible display about drones uh, in downtown Charlottesville. And I want to take this occasion to explain very briefly what it is that many of us think is wrong with a technology as fun and exciting and innovative as drones. The first thing that's wrong is what drones are being used for around the world, in particular in places like Pakistan, Afghanistan, Yemen, Somalia. There are refugees being created by the hundreds of thousands fleeing the horror of the drones. There are children being traumatized by the thousands. Uh, the buzzing overhead is keeping people in their homes. Mothers in Yemen are teaching school to their neighbors' kids in their homes rather than send, send the kids out to school. Uh, men are avoiding meeting in any large numbers. People are living in constant horror of being eliminated by that buzzing noise that is over their heads, that aggravating, terrorizing buzzing of an unmanned flying killer robot. And it's killing. And it's mostly killing innocent people. Uh, our president gave a speech not too many weeks back uh, suggesting that he would begin applying someday in certain countries to non-Americans he's killing the strict criteria that he's invented for himself to apply to Americans, which he has he says applied to one out of the four Americans he's killed thus far with drone strikes, but the evidence that he has met those criteria in that one and only one case uh, is secret. We can't see it. <laughs> the, the, the public evidence is exactly the reverse, suggests that even in that one case, no criteria whatsoever have been met. Uh, and in fact, the idea that you can legalize murder with a secret memo and keep it in a drawer and keep Congress and the public in suspense as to whether the murder is legal or not until we get to see the memo is absolutely outrageous. These drones are very, very tempting. They appear easy. They appear clean. You don't have to capture people. In, e in many of these cases, including the famous case of Anwar al-Awlaki, the evidence suggests that people would have turned them over for trial. Had they been charged with a crime, had extradition been requested, uh, instead, rather than capturing, rather than torturing, rather than putting on trial, all dirty, messy stuff, we have this clean solution of drones. Very, very tempting. Uh, and yet it is taking us into new wars. It is creating hostility. It is creating enemies. We didn't have a ground war in Yemen to replace with a drone war and call it better. We had nothing. We now have a drone war. And the people who say it's making us less safe include the people of Yemen, the people of Pakistan, and U.S. military experts People like Admiral Dennis Blair, former director of national intelligence. People like Michael Boyle, President Obama's former counterterrorism uh, advisor. And dozens more say that this is making us less safe, not more safe. There were experiments done decades back called Milgram experiments, in which actors pretending to be scientists would instruct volunteers to inflict painful shocks on other volunteers who were actually actors. Very, very painful shocks, even death. And the vast majority of people would do it. Well, we are now playing that out in reality. We uh, had a, a former drone pilot come out a couple of weeks back and say that he is incredibly depressed incredibly distressed, suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, as drone pilots do at a higher rate than real pilots, according to the U.S. Air Force, because he sat at a desk and obeyed instructions and played a part in killing over 1,600 people. That ought to traumatize anyone. And it is traumatizing our drone pilots. We've had suicides, we've had PTSD, we've had accidental deaths, we've had friendly fire deaths, and we are having blowback. And we have seen blowback. We found out where a drone piloting station was in Afghanistan when an Afghan blew himself up there as revenge. So there, this is not a pain-free uh, method of war making, even from the side of the aggressor.
which is what the United States is here. And we have dozens of other nations developing drones, preparing to use drones, and we are establishing a model of absolute lawlessness that people will not want to see other nations engaging in. This has to stop. It's going to destroy the rule of law. It is going to endanger us all. It is going to debase our culture and our morality. It has to be eliminated. It's going to be imported to the United States. We are already hearing voices suggesting that these methods be used in extreme emergencies, of course, in the United States. No, it has to stop. We can ban weaponized drones. And I encourage people to go to rootsaction.org and sign the petition to ban weaponized drones. The second problem with drones is surveillance. You put a drone up in the sky with the kind of cameras that now exist, and you are able to capture video footage of every field, every street, every house, every car, every pedestrian, their gestures, their movements, what they're wearing, and you're able to store that Days and days and days of footage of everyone beneath the hovering drone. This is not compatible with the Fourth Amendment any more than an NSA program that sucks up everyone's telephone or email information is compatible with the Fourth Amendment, which requires that you have probable cause and that you go to a court and that you get a warrant for where and when and what you're going to search or seize. It's not compatible. There, there may be good uses for drones. Drones can be used for any number of wonderful things, but until you can make them compatible with our constitutional rights, you're going to have to hold off. Figure out a way that you can deliver my coffee by drone or fight forest fires by drone that is compatible with our constitutional rights, and I'll be all for it. Otherwise, we have survived this long putting out forest fires, delivering coffee without drones, we can survive for centuries to come and keep the right to representative government, to government of, by, and for the people, to freedom of speech and assembly, and the right to petition our government for a redress of grievances, and we will be better off no matter how exciting the technology appears to argue that it's inevitable, to argue that the technology is in charge of us and that we have no choice is to surrender our very agency as human beings, as shapers of our destiny. It's outrageous. We have banned cluster bombs, much of the world has, not this country, uh, chemical weapons, landmines. We have made choices in the past. We can make choices now. We can decide how and whether to use this technology. I'm proud to live in a drone-free zone in Charlottesville.